the Digital India program recently celebrated seven years of its launch. The campaign has boosted the adoption of innovation and digital technologies across sectors. CNBC TV18 hosted Digital India Vision 7.0, powered by MasterCard. Dedicated to connecting all the dots like digital infrastructure, e-governance, electronics manufacturing and modern digital laws with a focus on digital privacy, cybersecurity, capacity building and skilling to catalyze new India's decade. Among other key conversations, the event also had industry experts converge for a power-packed discussion to dwell upon how the adoption of disruptive technologies, innovative business models will enjoy an upward growth trajectory in a panel discussion titled 5G to foster India's decade. Thank you very much for that. Now, 5G holds the promise of 100 times faster speed and lag-free connectivity. Coupled with artificial intelligence, IoT, AR, VR, emerging technologies like robotics, it can enable a lot of use cases across sectors, healthcare, agriculture, e-commerce, manufacturing, education, and 5G will form the bedrock of the technological developments of this decade. But the idea of a decade is not only increased use of technology, it should also be inclusive, it should have a socio-economic impact, and 5G can help India bridge its digital divide and bring in inclusive growth. So to talk about how we can fully realize the 5G potential and help usher in India's decade, it's my pleasure to once again warmly welcome our panelists here on the stage and we await Madhav Sheth of Realme joining us in moments from now. Thank you very much. Uh, sir, Rajara, my first question is, the 5G auctions have been a resounding success. Sunil Bharti Mittal said, in my 30 years, this is a first. No fuss, no follow-up, no running around corridors, no tall claims. This is ease of doing business in its full glory. 5G auctions are done. What is next? And you know, as an opening remark, how do you think 5G will help foster, bring in India's decade by bringing innovation, inclusivity, while having a socio-economic impact? Thank you. Um the task of the government was actually to ensure that um, the climate for uh, rollout of 5G is put in place in the first instance, while spectrum auction was part of the process. And the preparation started a little long ago, I mean, I think, I mean, as early as uh, 2017 when, when we decided to set up a 5G test bed. So with IIT Madras and uh, several other IITs and uh, Samir, one of our research institutions. So the last several years have been hard work in terms of supporting, helping, assisting, facilitating the ecosystem players, especially the startups and the tech, uh, deep, deep tech startups, to actually work on these technologies ahead of time. So while that be the, so, uh, the case, I think the government also took a lot of efforts in unlocking Spectrum, because Spectrum doesn't come, I mean, it's already deployed in several other uses. So getting the Spectrum unlocked and uh, putting them to the market took a lot of effort. In fact, because there were several other stakeholders like Defense I mean, uh, and many other uh, users who had to part with a, a, uh, some of the Spectrum which could be then auctioned. Of course, the, uh, the auction process was, uh, itself took a lot of, uh, quite some time. But nevertheless, I think uh, at the end of the day, I mean, I would like to say that the, ta the, the job of the government as part of the auction process was to essentially put out more Spectrum in the market because essentially India is one of the countries where the spectrum per population is, is actually low. I mean, in fact, for the kind of explosion in data which, is, which we are seeing now, we need more spectrum per population. So therefore, from that perspective, I think we have, uh, it's a good beginning. And we believe that uh, this, uh, uh, this will spawn not only new use cases, because 5G is obviously a different technology with uh, a number of enterprise use cases, and also promises greater speed, low latency, higher reliability, and so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, I think this is a great opportunity for innovation to happen because essentially innovation happens around new technology. And I think 5G that way promises to be disruptive in its, uh, in its uh, use cases, I mean, I think. So and therefore, from that perspective, we are quite excited. We will continue to work with the, with the industry to actually develop these use cases. We look forward to a very robust and, uh, and a planned long-term rollout. Okay, so innovation is a key factor that you're keeping in mind. I want to talk, sir, a bit about inclusivity. 5G, they say, can help bridge India's digital divide. You know, while Telangana is making a lot of efforts to make sure optical fiber reaches every household in Telangana, the problem is 
uh, it's still very hard. Two thirds of India is in rural areas where a cable, a fiber, finds it very hard to reach. Most of us have mobile connectivity, but the speeds are not very high. So when we switch to 5G, we will have very high speed and high quality broadband-like experience, which can usher in a lot of innovation, enable the use cases that you're talking about. So when this happens outside of the metros, it will help India bridge its digital divide. So my question is that 5G right now is going to be rolled out only in the key cities, in the metros, I think 11 in October, and it will take a couple of years before it becomes pan-India. So in a way, if the operators are right now going to cater to the creamy areas, only the metros, will it not deepen the digital divide rather than bridge it? Your thoughts on how 5G can foster inclusivity? All telecom networks, by very nature, start from a focal point, and then like a circle, they keep expanding. So that's the very nature of telecom networks, and 5G will be no different. So it's not surprising that they have to start from the cities, but my feeling is that the penetration of 5G handset, which is critical, because without 5G handsets, even if you provide the network, it won't work. So that is going to rise so quickly that I, nobody can predict how many years it will take for it to go to the deep part of the country. But I think it will be much quicker than what we are all expecting. Your own estimate, when we could have 5G pan-India? Well, I think we are in a 100-meter race, so keep running as fast as you can. <laughs> Don't worry about how long it takes. We'll do our level best to reach as soon as we can. Rajaraman, your thoughts on inclusivity? 5G is, is new to most parts of the world, I think, though, of course, a number of countries have launched it. The rollout will be gradual, because as uh, and even the, the telecom service providers have taken a measured step, because obviously they would like to see how revenues grow, etc. So it will be a measured rollout. 4G will continue to be the base load I mean, uh, system. While 4G, 5G builds up, it will definitely reach out to the rural areas. And let me also say this. See, today the 4G covers almost like 98% of the subscribers. Now the Honorable Prime Minister has taken a decision to actually do saturate the country with 4G. So the technology that we are going to adopt it will also be 5G enabled. To switch on 4G, 5G will not be very difficult. I think most of the technologies of 4G can be uh, upgraded to 5G without much of effort. So I think once the use case is built up, I think this country, the, the 5G will really explode. That's our ex ex expectation. And let me also say, see, the Indian uh, digital user is not to be underestimated. We lead in terms of the data use, you know, I mean, I think, and in fact, in, in the most parts, parts of the world, the average data use is about 12 GB per user per month. But India has already reached about 18, I mean, I think, which I think is, shows that I think the uptake will be very fast. No, absolutely. I think 4G helped India's digital uh, consumption go up by six and a half times data consumption. Uh, Rajan, to take up on that point about use cases, uh, B2B value proposition of 5G can be well imagined, right? AI and 5G will help autonomous cars, we could have robotic surgeries taking place remotely in healthcare. But what about from a B2C point of view? Now we still don't seem to have a killer 5G app or a use case for which we require 5G. Now 4G enabled movie streaming, which was not earlier possible with 3G. <coughs> What is it that you see from a customer consumer point of view will be that compelling use case for which you know, 5G is needed and that will drive adoption? I think I'll ask you a counter question. What was the killer use case for 4G? What was the killer use case for 3G? Typically use cases do not generally, the killer ones, you don't see them born till you have the G rolled out. Now, I, I would like to touch up on the topic which was discussed as to what is going to happen in 5G in India. With 4G, we address the need of the mobile customer, right? And we talk about 12 GB, 19 GB, actually. That's sort of consumption per month, from 1 GB to 19 GB. And if I ask any one of us that what is it that you're doing which consumes 90, I don't think we have a very clear answer how we ended up using 19 GB. And we're still growing. What is missing is the connectivity in the home. Uh, broadband inside the home, especially during the pandemic, we all saw that all of us, the school moved inside the home, the office moved inside the home, and we needed broadband inside the home. With 5G, what you're going to see is that, especially with this super successful auction, 
and I would say it is one of the best things that has happened to this country. And as we watch global and now we watch India, millimeter wave and the way the government has managed to offer and the operators have taken up the challenge of huge, taking huge spectrum, millimeter wave is going to solve the issue of home broadband. So what I would see is that the home needed fiber. Fiber is a difficult proposition. It's going to take its own time. And with millimeter wave, you will see the home getting the fiber. That's the first consumer use case. Because now you have broadband inside the home. Apart that, of course, you can talk about zillions of use cases. I think the operators, Airtel, Geo, Vodafone, have over the last one year, during the trials, have showcased multiple use cases. I would still say that Let's not define what's a killer use case. Basically, 5G is the need of this country primarily to exactly address the digital divide because 5G is going to be going to the rural. With millimeter wave, we are going to reach out to the end of the villages which had been difficult with fiber. So my belief is that 5G is going to be all pervasive very quickly. So from a B2C point of view, the biggest use case will be home broadband, fixed wireless access? To start with? to start with. Uh, Anand, coming to you on that, would you like to add any more potential use cases on B2C? And then we'll get chatting about B2B and the value proposition. See, as you said, I think on, on the B2C side, as I mean, video will continue to be one of the biggest, but you know, you are already getting 4G, but how do you sort of look at ultra speed is going to be one of the killer use cases as we go along. And clearly, as uh, Rajan mentioned, these things will evolve as the as the sort of uh, as the network grows if 4g was all about feeds and speeds 5g will be about providing the experience to the end user with more and more developments happening in the case of say metaverse or in the case of ar vr how do you sort of provide the uh, shopper the same experience that you have when you're shopping so i think those are the things that people will start working on as and when as in, this becomes more and more ubiquitous but I think, as you mentioned, the biggest benefit or biggest use cases will be on the B2B side. Today, telecom service providers gain a big chunk of their revenues from the consumer mobility side, and there is a huge opportunity on the enterprise side, which is what we are working closely with all the operators on. I think there, there is enormous potential across all of these areas. I mean, during the pandemic, some of us in the knowledge sector perhaps had the luxury of working for extended periods of time from home. How do you extend that? To, the, to, to beyond the knowledge sector workers. Why would they not have the luxury or the uh, advantage of having to work from wherever they want rather than working from there? That's where all the use cases of manufacturing, agriculture, all of these come into play. And I think that is where 5G will have a big role to play going forward is the way we see it. Let me also welcome Madhav Shade of Realme into the discussion now. Madhav, thank you very much for joining in. I want to complete the point about you know, 5G for consumers and then we'll get chatting about enterprise and how we can make India a global powerhouse. Now for 5G to be ubiquitous, we also need 5G enabled handsets to be fairly cheap. Hmm. What is the price range? That would be ideal. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for hosting me over here and thank you all the panelists. I've been uh, old friends to a few of them. I think uh, talking about the pricing of the 5G, the need of an hour is to bring in more affordable 5G phones in India. For, because I always believe that basically if you do not have the devices, more affordable devices will not bring the adoption of 5G and that is extremely crucial. So we are really, even before the 5G services have launched, we were the first one to launch the 5G devices in India. We have already have more than 5 million users who already are on 5G in India at this point of time, uh, ranging from our all set of handsets. And our more than 50% of the portfolio would be 5G. What we are trying to bring is about $100, $150 price segments, $150 plus price segments to bring to 5G as well. And I think that's what the vision we carry in 2022 and 2023. Probably doing that, I believe that basically because handsets, as I said, is one of the most crucial part for adopting 5G being the hub for controlling all the AIoT ecosystem devices. Where I said he said about B2B, I said B2C also would be one of the biggest thing. Everything around you, which is conventional, will move to smart. Which means that basically everything will be controlled through a smartphone. Which means that basically rural people will be more connected to the urbans. And that is the most important part where the AIoT ecosystem will come into play. So for us, the most important role is to make sure that how many more and more people come onto the 5G healthcare devices. And for that, you're saying the price should be $150 or even lower? 
we have a handsets already starting from 150 dollars right okay. what we are trying to bring is to bring more affordable 5g phones into the ecosystem and that would be 100 dollars that's something which is not possible at the current point of time, but probably yes. I think through the ecosystem players over a period of time, maybe it would be possible. It's also all about the economies of scale. It's not possible just on the segments, but the people adoption after the services roll out will also play a crucial factor on this particular fact. Akhil, um, on pricing, right? Globally, the experience has been that 5G pricing is not at a significant premium to 4G, maybe at best 10%. Uh, what is your sense of 5G pricing? And would you say that telecom companies and operators have not made a return which is commensurate with their capital expend investment into migrating from 3G to 4G? Now, 4G, for instance, enabled a whole world of applications, right? It ushered in the app economy. It helped the rise of SaaS economies. But it's not that operators financially benefited so much. So your thoughts, first on 5G ARPU, how much higher do you think it can be? And then do you think telcos have not been able to maximize and benefit from this? Well, the financial health of the operators, you're touching a very raw nerve, so I'll talk about it later. Let me step back and talk about the use cases, though it's not part of the question, because it's very importantly linked to the pricing. I think one very important use case which we all miss is the mobile, mobile services itself. I mean, the fact remains that with the handset penetration, 5G will be used for mobile services, the maximum. Then come the home broadband, then come the enterprises, and also please don't forget that all the technological advancement will need more and more bandwidth. Therefore, this is the bedrock that will be needed. On the pricing, well, I think it really depends on the scale. My feeling is that ultimately if the penetration of handsets is very quickly, it will be another service. And I must say that in 5G, maybe we're two and a half years behind, 6G, both India and China have said 2030 is when we would be looking at 6G auctions. So we're going to be, you know, right there with uh, the rest of the world when it comes to 6G and we're bridging that gap very, very fast. Uh, Anand, um, you know, you constantly speak to a lot of companies. You're working with so many partners in this entire ecosystem. What are your conversations like? See, I think the conversations with our clients and our customers and governments are primarily around two or three areas. What could be, see, see one important thing is with this mobile economy, apps are becoming the business. How do you enable the apps to sort of be more 5G ready, be, have more and more better user experience? That is what the conversation is. How do I sort of leverage the power of 5G, which enables certain technologies like segment routing, which, which gives you a fit-for-use bandwidth is the way I would call it, right? Somebody needs a batch processing, which requires a huge amount of data to go through. Somebody requires a very, very low latency to perform certain type of applications. I think those are the conversations that are going on both on the consumer front and, on the, and from a business perspective as well. Madhav, you said Realme has shipped out 5 million 5G handset. If we meet one year down the line, what would that number look like? Incrementally, if you're selling five phones, how many of them are 5G now? 50% uh, of our portfolios are 5G. As per some recent data which we studied about, by 2027, there will be 400, 500 million 5G users in India with handsets having on their hands. So I believe there's a huge potential of 5G. As I said, Anything about $150 going forward would be moving towards 5G, probably. So more than our current 50% of our portfolio is 5G at this point of time. And we intend to continue to grow on that particular point. Uh, Mr. Rajaraman, one final question then. What is next on the government's agenda? What are the milestones we should expect? See, when we look at the previous generations of technologies in the telecom sector, I think the manufacturing and service I mean, design in India, that, that bus was missed. So this is where the government is very focused. I think the CEO Nitya is there, I think, so here. So the PLI, the, the, no, yes. So he, he was the architect of the PLI I mean, revolution. So essentially, 
manufacturing in India, I think, is the biggest challenge, I think. So, and therefore, I think the PLI scheme uh, has laid the foundation for getting in manufacturers within the country, in which he talk, talked about. But I think we have gone one step further, and we have also put in place a design-linked insurance scheme, I mean, in incentive scheme, wherein we are providing incentives for companies to make designs in India. I mean, the IP should be registered in India. So we are not resting with that. We have uh, uh, also we are also working with uh, on uh, research and development. In fact, we have uh, the budget announced a 5% uh, USOF R&D fund, so which will amount to about nearly about 500 crores per year. So we are going to fund a number of companies uh, in India to actually to to do deep research and uh, come out with their own designs. And let me say that. In 4G, I think we have a number of uh, local companies which have come out with radio access networks. They have also come out with core designs. CDOT has come out with its uh, 4G core, which has been tested recently. And in 5G, we are already there. I mean, there are a number of companies with, with networks in a box for enterprise. There, there are companies which already have a radio access network. So I guess the focus will be on R&D and developing technologies which are domestic. And 5G will play, be the backbone to spur India's manufacturing. Gentlemen, this has been a fascinating conversation. Thank you very much for your time, information and insights. In the next episode, industry experts come together to focus on how organizations can adopt agile security testing methods and why the security boundaries of various players must be extended to the end users, third parties and other ecosystem partners in a panel discussion titled Securing the Cashless Payment Ecosystem.